For those of you who are, should I say, really observant, but that's a better, that's another way to say it. For those of you guys, you may notice that the Threadripper system isn't here anymore. And well, that's because after just a couple months of ownership, it started shutting down, like just completely powering off instantaneously whenever I would render a video for more than 20 seconds. And at first I was like, really? Because my overclock seemed pretty stable. I haven't been running the integrated memory controller with too high of a voltage or anything. So I started taking a look at my overclocking settings and I didn't see anything weird there. And then I noticed in the BIOS that the idle temperature was up in the 60s, pretty close to the 70s. And it's not supposed to be that hot when it's liquid cooled. So yeah, I clearly recognized that something was up with this liquid cooler. I could see the voltage and it wasn't out of whack at all but something is definitely up with this liquid cooler. Um, I changed the power plan off of high performance down to balanced so that it could take the processor state down to 1% if it needed to. I re-rendered again and it went down to under one gigahertz. It was thermal throttling so bad, which is hilarious to see it thermal throttle so bad, but Something's up with this cooler and it's time to take a look and see what that is. So when I found out that it was the cooler, I did a few things. Uh, first, I just touched the surface of the block with... I was not expecting that. Also, I'm a pretty nervous, jumpy guy as you've no doubt seen, but that's some decent pressure it's got. Uh, anyway, ah! That was a big spurt. Yeah, all over the front of my shirt. I'm not sure how well, I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera, but it got me pretty good. Ah, oh, that smells wonderful. The other thing I did is I looked at the reviews online for this, and it appears that I am not the only person to have theirs die in just a couple months of ownership. All right, I'm gonna bring the camera over, or maybe record with my phone, but there is some noticeable crap floating around in here. And if I just jiggle the container here, you can see that there's some stuff floating around in here. And I'm no expert on liquid cooler manufacturing, but I imagine that those little particulates are not desirable. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually take apart this block and we're gonna take a look at the fins in the cold plate and see what's going on in there. So I'm no expert, but I imagine it's not supposed to have this crap. And even if I go back to looking at the inside of this, I can see which side it came in on. Yeah, something has absolutely been corroding away in here. And if you're wondering why I switched to that Noctua air cooler for a while before the Threadripper system disappeared, this is why. Man, it's just so dirty and gross in there. And it, I know you can't smell it, but it smells pretty bad. Um, especially when it sprayed and got my shirt, that smelled pretty bad. 
so yeah. And I'll see if they'll give me a refund for this. I'm not optimistic that they will. If they've seen this video, maybe that should help. But in all honesty, like, I've never had a problem with a Corsair AIO. I've had two H110i's and H115i, three or four H60's, maybe an H55 over the years. So I've had good success with them. It's just that Enermax did not nail the chemistry on this one. So if you're looking at buying a Threadripper system and considering one of their AIOs, I would strongly encourage you to consider air cooling or do a custom loop, but don't do this Enermax closed liquid cooler until they get their chemistry right. I, I'm not necessarily sure what getting their chemistry right would be, but I am certain it's not whatever this is.